Mede proselte soe pote topsum toto poionti, mete syracosis metes met italiotes. Ugare pistantai crestos skeuas demen ictus, ala diapterusi cacos tyruntes apanta oxete raimuntes, hugroi cae silpiu al me. Hi, I'm Andrew Coletti, and in this series we're going to be exploring the food of several different ancient civilizations. Now, today's episode is all about the ancient Greeks, and unlike the Mesopotamians and the Egyptians that we heard about in our previous episodes, the Greeks have a huge tradition of food writing. They were writing cookbooks, they were writing recipes, they were also actually writing food critiques, especially this one particular author known as Archistratus. Um, Archistratus is sometimes called the first food critic because he wrote an entire book telling you where to get the best food in Greece, and he has very strong opinions about everything. In the quotation that we hear in the beginning, Archistratus is complaining about a particular recipe, a particular style of preparing fish, which was, of course, a common ingredient in the Greek diet. And this particular way of uh, seasoning fish and putting melted cheese on top of it is especially associated by Archistratus with the Greeks of southern Italy and Sicily. This region of the Greek-speaking world is really known for its strong culinary tradition. And actually, it was Greeks from the city of Sybaris in this region um, where master chefs had patents on intellectual property to protect their recipes from imitators. And this is the first ex known example of intellectual property patent law. So today we're going to be making a fish in the style of Archistratus' least favorite, uh, in the style uh, that was popular in this, in this famous region for ancient Greek chefs. And we're also going to make another recipe called masda or maza. This is a dough made from roasted barley flour. Now, ancient Greek cuisine, just like all aspects of their civilization, was all about balance. It was all about matching the strongly flavored things with bland things and, and you know, not having too much or too little of one or the other. Uh, the expression, everything in moderation, is originally from the ancient Greeks. So this was something they were very much concerned about, and also how your food even affects you or changes you. So we're going to be trying these two recipes to balance together, and we'll see if they are really as bad as Archistratus says. Hi, I'm Fiorella, and I am a registered dietitian and a foodie, and I am fascinated by ancient food culture. And today we're going to talk about the ancient Greeks. So what did they eat? They had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And for breakfast, they had a barley bread that they dipped in wine that was watered down. And for lunch, they had lighter plates of legumes and eggs and fish and olives and cheese, while they saved the larger, heavier meal for dinner, where the men and women sat separately and they lounged at low tables and the common people ate without utensils. The ancient Greeks also had a very interesting take on illness. They viewed it as dis-ease of the four humors, which were black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. They believed that when these were in an imbalance in the body, then illness would arise. They also gave a lot of credit to food and the diet to cure the body. So today we are going to have Andrew cook for us a fabulous ancient Greek meal while I go set the table in the other room and we'll see you back here soon. So for these two recipes that we'll be making today, we will be using fish. This is Spanish mackerel, uh, which was a very popular fish in the ancient Mediterranean, uh, mackerel. And as you can see, the head and the fins and tails have been removed. I will also be using white wine vinegar, salt, grated cheese. You could use pecorino or Parmesan cheese. This is actually a hard Greek cheese. Olive oil, asafoetida powder, which I will be explaining in a little bit and oregano, which was a common herb used in the ancient Mediterranean. And then for the other recipe, the cooked uh, flour, I will be using barley flour. This is about a cup and a half of barley flour. So we're gonna start off by making the fish. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we're going to make a style of fish that was very popular in ancient Greece, but which the food critic Archistratus was not crazy about. So the mackerel that I have, uh, as I mentioned, it has it, its head and fins have been removed, but it still has bones inside. But once it's cooked, it should be tender enough that that's not going to really matter. Um, to make the most out of the different seasonings that we're using, I'm going to actually put some oil and the asafoetida powder on it first and bake it. And then after that, I'll add the cheese and some of the other ingredients. 
I wanted to take a moment actually to talk about acid fetida powder, which is one of the most interesting ingredients in this recipe. So in the original recipe, um, Archistratus mentions an ingredient called sylphion, or sylpion in ancient Greek. And this is something which was also known to the Romans and was popular for a very long time in the Mediterranean world as an ingredient in um, cooking. But Silphium is actually derived from a plant which is extinct in modern times. It was so popular that in ancient Rome, essentially, it was over-harvested, it was over-cultivated into extinction. Um, but the plant is pretty similar to another plant that we still use today called Asafetida. This is a plant that you can find commonly used as a spice in South Asian cuisines, and you can find it at any store that has South Asian or Indian groceries. Asafetida is the resin of a plant, so it's this hard, dried resin that then gets ground into powder, and it has this very distinctive and kind of funky smell when it's raw. It smells like sort of like onions, um, but it gives a really nice savory, like deep flavor um, when you, once it's been cooked. So that's what we're going to be using. The ancient Greeks and Romans were aware of asafetida and its similarity to the silphium that they loved so much, and they actually thought of asafetida as being like a cheap substitute for silphium. So that's pretty much what we're going to be using. So I'm just gonna take my fish and put them in the pan. I'm gonna put olive oil and a little bit of salt on the outside, on both sides. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the asafetida powder. This stuff is pretty strong, so a little goes a long way. All right, so I'm gonna put these in the oven, which is already preheated to 350 degrees, and I'm gonna bake it for about 10 minutes before I add the other ingredients. So while the fish is baking, we can start working on the other recipe that we're making today. The ancient Greeks divided their cuisine into two different categories. So you have opson and siton. Opson means anything that's really f savory or flavorful or delicious, and then siton is like the backbone or the core of the meal. So that could be bread, it could be porridge, it could be various forms of grain. And it can be a meal by itself, but ideally you want to serve it combined with some other things to make it taste better. And that's basically what we're doing. The fish is going to be our opson, and then the other thing that we're going to make is the siton. The same sort of concept is found in a lot of modern cuisines, actually, in particular in um, East Asian cuisines, like in Korean and Japanese cuisines have the concept of banchan or of okazu, meaning like little uh, savory or strongly flavored dishes that are served alongside rice. So the Greeks had a, a similar idea to that. But one form of siton that was made by the ancient Greeks in particular is something called maza or masda. And what this is, is roasted barley flour, which is then, instead of being baked into a bread, the flour itself is cooked, and then it's combined uh, with water and oil and salt and made into, a, made into a sort of a dough. And that's what we're going to be serving alongside this fish. So I have the barley flour here, and I'm really just going to be cooking it over the stove first before I combine it with some other uh, seasonings. Hippocrates, the famous ancient Greek physician and medical writer, was aware of the negative health effects of eating raw flour. The most important step of this recipe, since you have the ground barley flour, is that you gotta cook it first, or else you're gonna get a stomach ache because the flour will expand in your stomach. And this is something that was known to ancient Greeks. So this is a bare um, pan, and I'm just adding the flour directly into the pan. It's important to keep stirring it continually because you don't want it to turn black and burn, but we just want it to get roasted basically and just kind of nicely brown. You'll start to notice after a couple of minutes that the flour is gonna change color and it is also going to give off a really nice smell. It starts to have like a nutty cooked sort of smell. Barley was the first staple crop for the ancient Greeks. Later in Greek history, they start using wheat or they start using other types of grain, but barley is kind of the most centrally important one. Barley bread, uh, especially later in Greek and also in Roman times, barley bread starts to be considered um, lower quality than wheat bread. Barley bread starts to be regarded as like the bread of the, the common people. 
I'm already starting to smell this flour. So you just have to keep stirring it to make sure that it doesn't get too dark. Yeah, starting to get the smell, that like roasted smell. And you can see it's really starting to turn brown now. So now the flour is quite brown, which means it's almost finished cooking. I'm gonna try to mix the white and brown parts of it together as much as I can so that it gets evenly distributed. If it starts to get a little stuck to the pan, you wanna just scrape it off because you don't want it to get burned. All right, so the barley flour has now been cooked for long enough. You can see that it's quite a bit darker than it was when we started, and it's also given off a lot of smoke. I'm just gonna continue mixing it as much as I can to kind of distribute any parts of it that got a little more roasted than others. Roasting flour over an open fire like this is probably one of the earliest ways in which people consumed flour. Um, since it doesn't require any yeast or fermentation or anything like that, it's, it's a, even simpler than most types of bread. The ancient Greeks sometimes used maza, this dish, as, um, just as a, as a kind of stand-in word for all kinds of food. The same way that we might use the word bread today, like saying that somebody was given bread and water to eat, the Greeks would also use the word maza. Okay, I'm gonna let this cool down for a moment because we're gonna have to mix it with some other ingredients to form the dough. And let's check on the fish that's in the oven. I can smell the asafetida. The fish is getting really nice and crispy and everything. So at this point, I'm gonna add our remaining ingredients to the fish. So we have white wine vinegar, which would have been the most common form of acid in ancient Greek cooking, because one of the challenges when you're recreating ancient Greek cuisine is that a lot of times ingredients that are very popular in the Mediterranean today, people just didn't have them in the ancient Mediterranean. They didn't have tomatoes yet, they didn't have lemons, they didn't have a lot of things that we might use today. So white wine vinegar would have been the main source of acid, or also um, the pressed juice of fresh grapes, which is very, very sour. So I'm just gonna kinda sprinkle a little bit of this onto the top of the fish, which is exactly what Archistratus describes, sprinklings of vinegar. The reason I'm doing this now and not at the very beginning is because cooking tends to neutralize the flavors of acid, so I thought that we would be able to taste the vinegar better if we don't do it in the very beginning. And now, I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt, just a little bit, and I'm gonna add the most important ingredient to the Greeks, and the ingredient which the food critic Archistratus was really not crazy about, the uh, grated cheese. And this is going to go back in the oven for a little bit longer, just long enough for the cheese to get brown on the top. And then we can add the final ingredient. So I'm using for this a type of Greek cheese, a type of modern Greek cheese that I believe is made from sheep's milk, but you could also use another hard cheese, anything that can be grated in this way. There are many different types of cheese, both soft and hard, made from different milks that would have been produced in ancient Greece. So this fish is going to go back in the oven for just another five minutes, uh, just long enough for the cheese to start getting melty on the top. And then the very last ingredient that I'll add at the end is the oregano. So while the fish is getting finished in the oven, I'm gonna go back to our roasted barley flour. Archilochus, who is one of my favorite ancient Greek poets, has a famous line where he talks about maza, about roasted barley flour. Um, he says something like, I'm, I drink my wine leaning on my spear and my masa comes from my spear. And he's talking in that quotation about his occupation of being a mercenary, of being someone that's hired to fight. So he's saying that his, his sustenance, his, in this case, roasted barley flour, comes from his fighting. 
So now that this has all been roasted, we can transfer it into a bowl. But before we do that, I'm going to actually add some, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of salt to it to mix in. And I'm also going to add some water and some olive oil. As soon as you add moisture to this, you notice that it starts to get very dark. So the final color of it is going to be even darker than this roasted color. So I'm just mixing everything together and eventually I'm going to be shaping it with my hands. It's still pretty hot, so you want to wait a little bit until it gets cooled down. But I'm going to start transferring it into a bowl so I can shape it. So here's my bowl of roasted flour. I'm going to add a little bit more water and oil. So now, as you can see, it's turning really dark. It's starting to really come together as a paste. One interesting thing that I discovered in the course of learning about this recipe is that roasted barley flour shaped into a dough like this is something, something that's still eaten by people today, um, in particular by Tibetans. Roasted barley flour in Tibet is mixed with usually with butter um, and with other liquid to make, but it, the end result looks very similar to this. And that's something that's a modern staple food. So I'm just continuing to shape this flour and water mixture. I'm just gonna continue shaping it until it all comes together into one ball. So I'm just adding a little bit more oil and that should be enough to really make it stick together. This is exactly the color that I want. As you can see, it's gonna get really dark once you add all the other ingredients. And I think now we are just about ready to shape it. One shape that I had in mind was, we could try it like this. So I mentioned how in Tibet, uh, roasted barley flour is really commonly consumed in pretty much the same exact way as it was in ancient Greece. And in Tibet, it's called tsampa. And one way that I've seen tsampa prepared is that it's squeezed in the palm of the person that's making it like this, and it forms ridges from the person's hands. So I thought that would be an interesting way to do it. Of course, we don't exactly know how the ancient Greeks would have prepared this, but we know that they did it in a variety of different ways. So you're basically just going to take small pieces and squeeze them or shape them into however you want. And this is going to be served with the fish. Ancient Greek cuisine and ancient Greek civilization in general is all about balance. And since they thought of their food in these two categories, even their food, they, they were mindful of balance, of not eating too much of one category or the other. You would get made fun of if you ate too much opson. All right. So these are done, and I think we're just in time to take the fish out of the oven. And then we can go ahead and use the final ingredient on the fish, which is the oregano. Mackerel is known to be a pretty oily fish, so just be mindful of all the oil that's coming out. And yeah, the cheese is all melted, so I'm gonna put the oregano. There are a couple of herbs in ancient Mediterranean cuisine that we definitely still use today, like oregano, like cilantro, but there's also some other ones that you might expect ancient Greeks and Romans to use that they really didn't. Um, basil and parsley and also rosemary were not particularly popular in cuisine in ancient Greek and Roman times. Although rosemary does have a lot of positive associations for the ancient Greeks and Romans, they associated it with memory. So I'm just sprinkling oregano onto the top of this and then it will be ready to serve. Andrew, what do you think of our ancient Greek table? I love it. I especially love that you included a peacock because I was also thinking about peacocks yes. being featured in Greek mythology. And uh, yeah, so it goes with the theme. I love it. And I think that everything else on the table is pretty accurate to the Greek diet. We have our beautiful grapes, our figs, dates, our cheese. What kind of cheese?
cheese is it? Um, this one is a Greek cheese made from sheep's milk. And uh, I guess there would have been lots of hard and soft cheeses available. Yes, yes. In ancient and Greece. yogurt, of course. Yes. Which is all of it, this all combined, is a very healthy, very healthy diet and kind of the foundations of what we now know as a Mediterranean diet. Yeah. So it's really good and heart healthy. And what, what kind of drink would they have with this meal? Well, the Greeks were uh, definitely drank a lot of wine, but they often watered down their wine and yes. they would serve it mixed with water. For a big fancy dinner party like this, actually, they might not even drink at all until after the food was finished. Ah, right. So that would be kind of the, the symposium, as it's mm -hmm. called, like the drinking party. Party comes after the That's actual right. dinner. Yes, are women allowed at this party? At the symposium, <laughs> no, unless you were a hetaira, which means companion, which ah, were the companion. highly educated courtesans that would come right. for entertainment at yes. the symposia. Mm, sounds interesting. So what do we have here? So this is a, a mackerel prepared in uh, a very popular ancient Greek style with cheese melted on top and oregano and also a seasoning called asafetida. And there's also on the side a masa, which is a dough made from roasted barley flour. Wow, and these are the accurate shapes. I learned that in uh, Tibet they also eat the same type of thing and they shape them in this way uh, in their hands, so ah. that's what I did. Ah, <laughs> so, you know, shall we try it and shall we eat like an aristocrat or a commoner today? Well, if you, <laughs> well, I think we should try both. Okay. If you want, do you want to eat with your hands? I'm try that. With my hands. Okay, so grab I a piece. I'm with my hands, I might as well eat with my hands. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna. Shall I, shall I lounge the way they would have? Yes, we need like lower, everything <laughs> needs to be much lower to lounging. be really ancient Greek. Okay, great. And so let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. You know, eating it with your hands, you know, increases the, the flavors. And I'm going to use a fork and see how that happens. And you can put the fish together with the, the dough. I love it. I think it's great. Mm. And it's healthy. Gave the culture of protein. The herbs are medicinal. It's great. Yeah, I do taste the, um, there's this like kind of oniony flavor that comes from the asafetida, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I like the balance. Ancient Greek culture and food is all about balance, so I like that it balances the, um, the dough, which is very mild tasting with the fish. And you wouldn't usually put the cheese with fish um, now, but I think it tastes great. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Fiorella. And I'm Andrew. And we're taking you from eggs to apples. Ancient recipes in a modern kitchen. We'll see you.